Between the 23rd and 26th of October 1944, the United States and the Empire of Japan fought the Battle of Leyte Gulf, in what is sometimes described as the largest naval battle in history. But was it? In this video, we will try to answer the question of whether Leyte Gulf was the largest naval battle ever, and if it wasn't, then what was? To truly answer this question, a set of criteria must be established. There are varying elements to consider, starting with defining the word largest or biggest. In past debates on this subject, historians have argued this point using different standards, such as the number of personnel or ships which took part, the total displacement of ships involved, the area the battle covered, or the strategic or political implications of the battle. We will look at different criteria to answer this question. First, we will look at displacement. At the Battle of Jutland, the 254 ships of the German and British fleets displaced 1,616,836 tonnes, which is enough by itself to make it the undisputed largest surface-only naval battle of all time. It is also the largest naval battle in terms of tonnage of actively engaged forces, exchanging fire with the enemy. Conversely, the Battle of Leyte Gulf could be considered the winner in terms of total displacement when including every ship in the combat area, whether they were engaged in combat or not. This figure is a combined 2,014,890 tonnes. This would include all naval forces supporting the ground invasion of Leyte, who never engaged with Japanese forces, and also all escorts of carrier groups who never directly engaged any Japanese forces, but were performing a role nonetheless. Of the approximately 367 ships counted in the tonnage of the battle, 133 ships on both sides, mostly supply vessels, did not exchange a single shot with, or often even see, the enemy. Given that the Battle of Leyte Gulf was fought over a wide geographical area, some 200 miles, by two separate US Navy fleets, the 3rd and 7th fleets, over three days, it has been contended that it should actually be treated as four different battles, not one single one. If this were to be accepted, the component battles of what we call the Battle of Leyte Gulf would fall off the list. The post-Renaissance era of naval warfare saw the end of battles involving hundreds of small wooden ships fighting at extremely close quarters, and instead led to the construction of larger warships which could fire from range. Most pre-modern warships required large numbers of combatants to board and capture enemy ships, but advances in firepower such as cannons significantly reduced the number of men needed for this task. Following the Industrial Revolution, the wooden ships of the line were gradually replaced by iron and steel dreadnoughts, before the aircraft carrier came to dominate naval warfare. Looking at displacement alone places a higher premium on the quality of the ships involved, while also filtering out many of the confusing and poorly sourced battles of the distant past. Next, we can propose the largest by number of ships involved. The United States and Australian contingent numbered roughly 300 vessels during the Battle of Leyte Gulf, while the Japanese offensive involved 67 ships of various sizes. However, the number of ships at Leyte Gulf is dwarfed in size by prior battles. Pre-Renaissance naval engagements sometimes involved hundreds of ships on both sides, due to their smaller size at the time. At Salamis, some historians have estimated that approximately 1,200 vessels took part, likely making this the largest naval battle ever by raw number of ships. During the First Punic War, Rome and Carthage fought three massive naval battles. First at the Battle of Cape Egnomus in 256 BC, where 680 ships fought for control over the waters of Sicily. Cape Hermaeum in 255 BC involves approximately 850 ships combined. At the Battle of Agates in 241 BC, 450 ships were engaged. Nonetheless, it is worth noting that many of these pre-Renaissance battles are only partially understood by modern historians. Observers at the time of Salamis and Agates often exaggerated the number of men and ships which took part in those battles. This remained an issue well into the 13th century due to the lack of credible sources. As an example, some historians claim that the 1279 Battle of Yamen in China involved the largest number of ships with over 1,050 vessels but is now believed many of these were transport ships rather than warships. Additionally, about 1,000 of these ships were chained together to prevent individual vessels from fleeing the battle and were not directly part of combat. In the 31 BC Battle of Actium during the last Roman Civil War, 
Mark Antony's forces officially entered the area with about 500 ships, but Antony only had enough manpower to deploy 140 to 300 vessels for the actual battle. This revisits the question of whether to count only ships involved in combat or the total number of ships in the area of the battle in question. Next is the discussion of the battles involving the most manpower. Once again, pre-Renaissance naval battles tend to have much higher numbers of personnel involved. The Battle of Cape Egnomus supposedly saw upwards of 290,000 combatants, and perhaps a similar number took part in Salamis, but historians have no way of knowing the true number. However, both of these battles pale in comparison to the claims made by Chinese sources during the wars involving Imperial China. In 208 AD, the warlord Cao Cao claimed to sail into the Battle of Red Cliffs with 800,000 men against 50,000 of the enemy, but other sources place the overall number at closer to 400,000. Over 1,000 years later in 1363, a Ming Dynasty fleet met the Han Navy in the Battle of Lake Poyang. According to contemporary sources of the time, this battle involved over 850,000 men which, if true, would be the unchallenged largest naval battle in history by manpower. At Leyte Gulf, both fleets combined carried a total of around 200,000 men, which is a staggering number for the modern era of naval warfare, but does not compare to battles such as Red Cliffs or Lake Poyang. Finally, there is the political and strategic element of determining a naval battle's place in history. Leyte Gulf was undoubtedly a key battle in the Second World War, but was it more important than some of its competitors? In 1975, the Austrian historian Helmut Penzel attempted to marry these elements by creating a scoring system, whereby he assigned a score to each of four aspects to a naval battle. Numbers involved with a score of 1 to 4, strategic significance with a score of 0 to 2, tactical execution with another score of 0 to 2, and political significance with a score of 0 to 1. Using this method, Penzel narrowed his search for the largest naval battle in history to seven contenders. Leyte Gulf, the First World War Battle of Jutland between the German and British fleets, Lord Nelson's famous victory of the Royal Navy over the French and Spanish navies at Trafalgar during the Napoleonic Wars, the 1692 Battle of La Hogue fought between the Anglo-Dutch coalition and France during the Nine Years' War, the Roman-era naval battles of Agates in 241 BC and Actium in 31 BC, and finally the Greek victory over the Persians at the Battle of Salamis in 480 BC. Pemsel ultimately assigned eight points to Leyte Gulf, declaring it the largest naval battle ever. The rest of the battles tied for second at seven points each. A noteworthy outcome here is that the Battle of Trafalgar carries the same weight as the Battle of Jutland, as the second largest naval battle ever, certainly an eyebrow raiser. The argument for Leyte Gulf as the biggest naval battle outside of raw numbers or displacement is based on its impact in ending the Pacific War. The Japanese Navy threw the last of its combined strength into the operation to stop the American landings in the Philippines, a final gamble to salvage a favourable outcome of the war. Ultimately, they suffered crippling losses in an overwhelming defeat that ended any hope of a Japanese victory or stalemate in the Pacific. For the United States, it was a clear strategic and tactical victory that cemented the US Navy as the undisputed naval power in the Pacific, if not the world. By contrast, the Greek victory at Salamis marked the end of Persian dominance in the region, which had immense consequences for world history. The Roman triumph at Agates ended the First Punic War and made Rome into the dominant military power in the Mediterranean Sea. 210 years later, Octavius defeated Mark Antony at Actium, which saw the end of the Roman Republic and ushered in the Roman Empire. The Japanese victory at the 1905 Battle of Tsushima cemented Japan as a rising power and dealt a blow to the Russian Empire from which it would never recover. While Jutland was a tactical stalemate, it eventually became a strategic victory for the British, who successfully maintained their blockade of Imperial Germany, contributing massively to the eventual victory in the First World War. Even battles with far less men or warships involved can be considered just as large and larger when considering strategic or political considerations. By similar logic to Leyte Gulf, the British victory over the French and Spanish at Trafalgar involved a combined 73 ships, but was a key turning point in the Napoleonic Wars. 
Furthermore, Trafalgar formally established Britain as the uncontested King of the Seas, a title that would not be challenged for 100 years. In the Second World War itself, the Battle of Midway in 1942 fundamentally changed the Pacific War and set the stage for the US to grow into the naval dominance that would culminate at Leyte Gulf three years later. Using the criteria of strategic importance, Many engagements through history have larger claims to the title of biggest naval battle of all time than Leyte Gulf. Arguably, the most strategically important theatre of the Second World War itself was the Battle of the Atlantic. The ongoing war of attrition, predominantly fought by the Royal Navy and Royal Canadian Navy and Air Forces against the U-boats, and in the naval battles against Bismarck, Tirpitz, Scharnhorst and Gneisenau, carried massive strategic weight, in that the whole war could have ended with defeat in the Battle of the Atlantic. However, as the Battle of the Atlantic involved a series of thousands of small-scale battles that in their totality added up to great strategic importance, individually they can't really appear in a list of the biggest battles of all time. It may well top a list of the biggest naval campaigns of all time, but that would be another video. And yet, Leyte Gulf is unique in all of these battles. Whereas most of these battles took place in or very close to the territorial waters of the warring nations, Leyte Gulf was fought nearly 7,000 miles from the continental United States and 1,500 miles from Japan. Rather than being one large engagement, Leyte Gulf actually consisted of four major subsidiary battles, along with numerous other small actions. These individual battles were fought over a period of three days and separated by distances of 200 miles. Well over 2,000 land-based and carrier aircraft took part in the action, the most for any naval battle ever. It saw submarine combat, a major carrier battle, the last battleship against battleship engagement in history, and one of the most unlikely naval victories of all time by Tappy 3. In conclusion, the question of what was the largest naval battle in history can only be answered in the eyes of the beholder. This has been an overview of the debate, the criteria involved, and the candidates to hold this title. It is up to the viewer to decide using their own judgement, these videos are possible thanks to our amazing patrons. We can't thank you enough for your support. Welcome to all our new patrons this month, and a special thanks to our patron of the week, Tom Cho, who has been a long-time supporter of the channel. Our favourite patron comments of this week's video come from Morgan, who says, Fun analysis, not sure which battle I'd pick. And Scott O, who says that while the Battle of Leyte Gulf was the death blow to the Japanese Navy, the Battle of Midway was the most important battle of the Pacific. If you'd like to be part of our Patreon community and get access to Patreon exclusive benefits, follow the link in the description below. Our Patreons get early access to our videos completely ad and sponsor free. You'll be able to hear what we're up to behind the scenes, and you'll have the chance to submit questions for our Q&A videos.